And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Many times a game will have a gimmick, and Waterloo is one of those games. This game honestly could have been produced in a very small box. It's a very easy-going, abstract strategy-style game. But instead they had this gimmick of sliding frogs, and they used the box as actually part of the game. And many times this doesn't work, at least for me. In Niagara, the, the box became a waterfall. And, eh, you know, is that really that interesting? Some boxes have a scoring track on them. That doesn't make any sense. But this one, I think it actually does work. This is a good game. I'm not going to call it great. I'm not going to call it very good. Just a good game. And the... Well, you know what? Let's look at it first. And then, and then we'll talk about how I think the, the gimmick works. So here you've seen the inside of the box, and here's the lid of the box. And on top of that lid, you put the board so that it's connected here. And then on top of the inside of the box, you put another board like this. And there you go, a beautiful lily pond. On each of these starting spots here, you put some frogs. And the order of the frogs, the colors, is printed on the board so you can see how to put them up. And then secretly, each player is given one of these, which shows you which frog color you are. Now, on a player's turn, and they'll go around the table, you can move one of these frogs up to as many frogs are in the space. So there's four frogs here, so he can move four spaces. The green one could now move three spaces. This one can move up to four. They can go in a straight line. Once you're on top of another frog, you can move two spaces, and he can move one, and now he can move two. Once you land here, well, you let it slide. And so that's the way the game works. As players keep moving pieces so that they can... One, two, three... And so as the game progresses, and I'm not going to play out the whole game for you, the pieces will be dropped in. Once all the pieces from one color are off the board, the game ends. At that point, we reveal. Da, 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 da. And we look here to see how much each color is worth. In this scoring example, yellow is worth two, four, seven. This one's worth nothing, because if you're over the line of four, you get nothing. Pink is worth one, two, six. Green is worth... 4, 7. Blue is worth 10. White is worth 4. So in this instance, blue is the winner. The player who controls blue is the winner of the game. So it's a very simple, easygoing game. And like I said, you don't need this long sliding box, but it's there. And people are going to like the game because of it. So I said at the beginning, you know, the gimmick thing. Dropping them in the box. And I think it works. I think the game makes it a little bit better. This game gives me a very similar feeling that, hey, that's my fish gave me. Um, as players try to maneuver it, there's no great depth of strategy here. And in fact, while I like the whole, what color are you, secret aspect thing, after a while it's pretty obvious. You know, you made a pretty optimal move with yellow, why would you do that unless you're yellow? But still, that's there. And then there's the memory element. Oh, I don't remember which one dropped where. Well, someone who's really sharp and really keen can keep track of that. So why cover it up at all? Well, I think you should cover it up just because, I don't know. Why should people keep track of every little detail like that? Or it adds a little bit of memory to the game. Either way, it's a quick, light game. Perhaps a bit too big a box size for a quick, light game. But if you don't mind the box size, and you're interested in a game, not for its theme, but just want a fun little game, and, and hey, it's kind of cute. I, I guess that's the best word to describe this game. Cute? Dropping them down the slides? Then check it out. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 